popular compact SUVs. The Elevate marked Honda's much awaited entry into this competitive segment, while the Creta, of course, has been a bestseller for the last eight years. And recently, its second generation received a facelift which got many more features and an enhanced design. While the Creta gets a lot of engine and gearbox options, including petrol plus CVT, the Elevate only gets petrol with a manual or CVT. CVT or Continuous Variable Transmission, is it worth buying? And between these two cars, where do you get a better setup, both for the city as well as on the highway? All the questions answered today right here on Car and Bike. My name is Shams and in case you still haven't, we request you to please go ahead and subscribe to our channel right now. Press the bell icon and please like and share this video if you find this information useful to you. One is the clear leader in the compact SUV space with over 10 lakh cars sold. Other, a newbie who has got great reception in the market ever since it arrived at the onset of festive season in 2023. The Creta itself got a facelift in January 24, making it even more desirable than before. So let's get straight to the point and begin the drive. Between these two cars, it is the Elevate that gives you a slightly clearer 180 degree view of the road with thin pillars and a clear view of the bonnet as well. As a driver, you like that, it's a good thing. This increases your confidence a bit more while driving the vehicle. Now, purely in terms of figures, the Elevate gives you more power and even slightly higher torque when compared to the Creta CVT, which is a good thing to start with because the CVTs are not known for outright performance. So any additional power or torque is going to help you as a driver, you will enjoy it more. Of course, these cars come with uh, sport mode as well as paddle shift. But if you compare this to a torque converter or DCT, you will not feel a huge difference when you compare it to the drive mode of the vehicle. So it's something that maybe you would slightly enhance your performance, but not increase it by a great deal and that's true for both the Elevate as well as the Creta. This is the same drivetrain that is seen on the Honda City and has proven its worth over and over again. A critical aspect for any CVT is fuel efficiency and here the Elevate impresses with almost 17 km per litre. The good thing is that this is significantly more than the manual version which returns 15.31 kmpl. In comparison, the Creta is slightly better as it gives 17.7 kmpl in CVT and 17.4 kmpl in manual. The Creta gets three drive modes, Eco, Normal and sport and three traction modes called snow, mud and sand to provide a different character when you need it. This is missing on the manual so only the automatic versions get it. Now the Creta may be inferior in terms of numbers when compared to the Elevate but in terms of the feel and the drive experience you don't feel too much of a difference between these two SUVs. Yes, the rubber band effect is still there. This is of course a CVT so press the throttle hard and you can feel it even more. But when you drive in the city, in the traffic, it's a very convenient car to drive. Just makes your life a lot easier than using it in your day-to-day -day routines. The steering wheel is good to see, good to hold, provides good level of feedback as well. And there's just the right kind of engagement that you're looking for from a car of this sort. Having said that, the peak torque kicks in at around 4,500 RPM, which takes the enthusiasm away. Dynamics of this SUV have remained spot on. Doesn't matter which engine you're driving, the turbo engine, the diesel engine, or this one, the naturally aspirated engine, the 1.5 litre motor. So in terms of ride quality or in terms of handling, there's nothing really to complain about on the Hyundai Creta. Yes, this is an SUV dimension wise. You know, you could expect a bit of body roll, but it's hardly there, which is a great thing. So good roads or bad roads, suspension does its job really well. You don't really get to see or feel a lot of pumps or potholes inside the cabin. And you can throw it around corners at good speeds and still carry the confidence with you as a driver, even the occupants don't get thrown around too much, which is a good quality of this car. The Creta, though longer than Elevate, gets wheelbase that is slightly lesser. The overhangs, though, don't really come in the way when it comes to aerodynamics. But one thing where the Elevate lacks when compared to the Creta are the NVH levels, because when you press the throttle slightly harder, there's a lot of noise that creeps into the cabin. You don't expect that from a car that costs this much or is present in this segment. You get a slightly quieter cabin when you do the same thing inside the Creta. A recent update on the Elevate has also meant that now you get some additional safety features on the SUV, uh, which is something that's worth appreciating. So now six airbags are standard across the range, which wasn't the case earlier when the SUV was launched. You get the seatbelt reminders 
and seat belt uh, and three point seat belts for all the passengers which once again is a good thing and vehicle stability assist traction control and hill start assist is standard on the suv but the creta 2 is quite loaded when it comes to safety yes there are many standard safety features here on the creta but what has really enhanced the appeal on this facelift of the second gen is the introduction of a whole lot of level 2 edas features so things like adaptive cruise control lane keep assist lead departure warning we've seen all these on the elevate as well the blind spot camera also is there on both the suvs but a sheer number of features that you get on the creta makes it a little more appealing when compared to the elevate but how much comfort and luxury is available in both these cars Let's find out. Starting with the Elevate, the beige and black two-tone color combination does give a more luxurious feel when compared to the fabric in grey seen on the Creta. Both SUVs get a 10-inch touchscreen system and a whole lot of connectivity features, wireless charger and air purifier. However, only on the Creta will you get ventilated front seats, electric parking brake, a panoramic sunroof and electric driver's seat. The 8-speaker Bose sound system also provides a superior experience. On the second row as well, sun blinds, a C-type charging port and a two-step reclining seat make the Creta a good bet. However, the seats themselves are cushier on the Honda. And now the SUV also gets adjustable headrests for all passengers. Talking about boot space, the Elevate scores better with 458 liters, while Creta offers 433 liters. From the outside, both come with an imposing SUV look and get connecting tail lamps along with 17-inch alloys on top trims, ensuring a commanding presence on the road. But a big question, of course, is the price. And while the Creta might be cheaper than the Elevate at the starting level when you go to the top there's a huge difference between these two SUVs elevate tops off at around 16 and a half lakh rupees ex showroom the Creta almost 19 lakh rupees ex showroom for this top CVT variant I'm driving right now so around two and a half lakhs is indeed a big difference looking at the segment these cars operate in so while the Creta gets more features it looks more appealing all that comes at a cost and looking at the price difference clearly the elevate comes across as a more value for money option between these two vehicles. So that means if saving money is your priority, then Elevate is a safe bet. And if you can spend a few lakh rupees more, then it's difficult to match the all-round package that is the Creta.